Now for part two, in which we'll concentrate on mapping multiple pieces of information at once. We'll call it multiplicity. Just as a reminder, here's all of Wisley's walks. But of course, a map doesn't have to be a single map. It might be multiple maps of the same area showing different facets of the data. And this is the basis for making a map out of small multiples, where some meaningful subdivision makes each small multiple different. Here we've simply used definition queries to create views of the data by month, beginning with the routes for March, which were mostly around his local neighborhood. April sees a few more distant parks show up, and also a golf course in the bottom right that allowed people to use the course for exercise and dog walking while it was closed for business during lockdown. We've already seen that Wisley walks are shorter in the heat of summer and the maps for July and August show that clearly. By the time we get to December in the early part of 2021, his walks are much longer and more varied because the temperature is much cooler. Small multiples can easily be created in ArcGIS Pro layout by adding multiple data frames to the layout, but often a simple way is to export the map to individual graphics and then to piece them together in a drawing package, which is what I did here. Over the course of lockdown, Wisley expanded his territory considerably, linking previously separate locales in his mental map. You can see this as the year progresses from top left to bottom right in this infographic. By month, the impact of the hotter months on his efforts is also visible, as it cools walks lengthen to reflect his wider knowledge. But there's only so much you can do with coincident data on the same static map. You're limited by the limits of visual perception and graphical capabilities. But we can get a little more inventive. We might even decide that a chart rather than a map is a better mechanism to communicate something meaningful. Here I'm going to make two rows diagrams that sit atop the map. One will show the morning walks and the other the afternoon walks subdivided by month and various metrics. First I created two point features which will act as the centre point of each rows diagram. But as we can see from the attribute table for these two points there's nothing there to map yet. I've got a few other data sets in the project. And if we open this table, we can see the maximum number of meters Wisley walked by month, with the first row for morning walks and the second row for afternoon walks. And a simple join adds this standalone table to the feature class itself. Now I'm ready to run a tool called the Coxcomb tool. As you can see, I've already added it to the project as one of the toolboxes. But where did I get it? Well, back in March 2020, I wrote a blog on mapping coronavirus coxcombs, which includes links to download the tool, and that's the easiest way to get it. And the tool is basically a geoprocessing tool that allows us to build coxcombs as features on top of our map. Back in Pro, and we run the tool. We specify the point features as input features. We specify a group ID, which the tool uses to assign data to specific coxcombs, in this case the morning and the afternoon one. And we add fields from the data which are to be turned into segments around the coxcomb. Just for brevity here, I'll simply add January and February. But in order to create the full coxcombs, you'd need all the months. I add a scale value which is used to determine the length of the largest radius for the largest data value in map units, in this case a thousand, and specify the units and their meters. And once you run the tool, you end up with two rows diagrams with maximum morning walks on the left and evening walks on the right. The diagrams begin with March 2020 at the top and each subsequent month is read clockwise. I simply repeated the process to create additional diagrams for the average walk length, here in pink, and the shortest walk length, shown in grey, and the three charts simply stack one on top of the other. But these charts need context in order to present them and to help people interpret them, so I put them in a layout and then exported it as a static map with a graphical style that reflects the classic example of this type of, type of graphic used by Florence Nightingale in the mid-1800s. It shows longer morning walks in the early months, and when Wisley was taken for early walks in the hotter months, the morning walks got progressively shorter as his evening walks became longer as the year went on. The impact of the heat is clear and the differences in the mileage on a month by month basis is also arguably clearer on a diagram than a map. While mixing and matching the methods shown in episodes 1 and 2 is possible, there's only so long you can go without reaching for tools that help you see some of the temporal information in the data.